Whoa, 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 hold it right there, fuzzy britches. Before you download that latest NVIDIA driver update, you may want to get through the topic on this news video because there are some issues with it causing people's systems to crash as well as high CPU usage even when you are outside of games, specifically after closing games, but for some people, even when logging directly into Windows. Also, AMD looks like they are set to be bundling The Last of Us Part 1 along with many of their Radeon GPUs and the finals begins its closed beta test today. I'll show you guys how to get very easy access to that because it is shaping up to be a hell of a good looking game in my personal opinion. So let's get into it. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click submit order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's gonna be with PayPal and then click on pay now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and typing the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first up, the NVIDIA driver in question, which is 531.18. Yeah, just wanted to make sure that I got the driver version right, which launched uh, last week has been actually having some issues start to crop up ever since the driver has been released. Many people have reported that there's, they've been having issues with crashing when playing games, but most notably is the NVIDIA container issue, which is seeing it using about roughly 10% of a user's given CPU. And I guess it could vary depending on which CPU you happen to be using. But in this screenshot here over on Hot Hardware, the source for today's story, you can see that their NVIDIA container was using about 10.7% or the person who posted this over on Twitter. And I can attest that after reading this story and loading up, looking in my, um, my task manager this morning, that my CPU usage for the NVIDIA container was also at about 9.7%. Now, as of right now, this has gone away it's because I rebooted the, the PC and I tried to get it to uh, recreate itself. And while this NVIDIA container thing is, which is always going to be here, is still running in the background, it has very, very little CPU usage to the point where it's not going to impact anything. But I would certainly say that if it was going to continually eat up 10%, of my CPU in the background, then that would be some cause for concern. But rebooting the PC, like I said, got rid of it. I tried loading back into Cyberpunk for like 15 minutes and then quitting out of the game and the issue did not come back. So it's not to say that it's fixed or anything. It just seems to be somewhat inconsistent and not as repeatable as, you know, maybe you, you might think as most people are saying it will stay there once you close out of a game. But even when I'm in game, that's the usage is not as high as 10%, it's around like two to 3% at most. And that's if I'm using shadow play. So like I said, I saw it up around 10% when I, when I checked it this morning, but I had been playing cyberpunk last night and my PC was running for several days. So who knows if that, who knows if that was a contributing factor, but right now it's not a problem, but if it, if it becomes a problem in the future and if it continues to eat up resources like 10% of a CPU, then certainly it would garner maybe rolling back the GPU driver or hopefully waiting for NVIDIA to get out a timely uh, fix for whatever is causing this issue because it was listed in the known issues for the feedback thread over on the GeForce forums for 531.18. If you could see for the open issues, 
it has higher CPU usage from NVIDIA container might be observed after exiting a game. So it's something that they're aware of. Let's hope it doesn't stick around for too many more driver revisions uh, after this one. They also even mentioned that Assassin's Creed Origin may randomly crash with the recent driver. So this recent driver causing a couple of headaches for some people, certainly not for everyone. And unfortunately, this driver is really needed if you want to get the best optimizations for things like Atomic Heart, Atomic Heart with DLSS 3 and being able to use it in that and getting it all done properly, then, you know, this driver is almost mandatory for you to get that working correctly. So hopefully it's something they can get resolved in the very near future. Up next, a unconfirmed game bundle with uh, AMD partnering up with Radeon for The Last of Us, which is going to be releasing at the end of the month. I believe it's March 27th, but don't hold my feet to the flames over that. But this unconfirmed bundle with uh, AMD and The Last of Us is all but confirmed. This kind of looks like this looks pretty legit and on their part. And it was posted over on eBuyer, which is a UK e-tailer, which shows that it seems like they're going to be bundling Last of Us 1 with many of their graphics cards going from the RX 6400 all the way up to the latest 7900 XTX. So if you can see this image right here, the screenshot of the ad from eBuyer, which has not been, again, not confirmed yet by AMD. But uh, I, it's all looking like it's probably going to be. If you pick up any of these GPUs, probably in the next couple of months in the U.S. or the U.K., I would think they're probably going to announce this pretty soon. You'll also get The Last of Us Part 1, which is a hell of a game, um, especially if you didn't play the original. And I know there was a lot of controversy around The Last of Us Part 1 with the, the remake of it. People saying it didn't need a remake. It already looked good as it was, and let alone charging $60, $70 for this thing. I think it's going to be $60 on PC. And for many PC gamers, though, it's going to be their first opportunity to actually play The Last of Us if they don't own a PlayStation console. So for those people, it's totally worth the amount of money that they're charging for it if you've never played this game before. And uh, yeah, if you happen to pick up a Radeon GPU in the next couple months, then you'll probably get it for free as well. Another game you could conceivably play, maybe, in the next couple of months is The Finals, which has a closed beta starting at some point today. Nobody knows exactly when it is. It would, I was hoping it'd be 9 a.m. It just hit 9 a.m. now, but it's, it looks like it's still not maybe active. Um, but the finals. So this was actually made by developers that worked on the older Battlefield games. And you can kind of tell with the destruction in this gameplay video here from the beta. Uh, this was posted by Jack Frags yesterday as, as a reviewer. He got early access to it. I still have not had a chance to play it yet, but... Hearing that it's from the older developers behind Battlefield and that it's a first-person shooter and seeing the level of destruction on hand that is almost constantly going on and conceivably almost everything on the map can be destroyed. And we're talking about very detailed objects here. We're not talking about simplistic building and architectural designs that look like they were sort of made to be destroyed. Like, um, like all of the surfaces and everything that's being taken down look like fairly unique um, you know, surfaces and textures for the given environment that they're in. And it looks like you could really just blow up like everything, close off access points to whole areas by taking down things like bridges. And you, then you can maybe reaccess them by using cranes and other parts of the map to interact with it. So this is like sort of like some next gen revolution, like maybe the direction Battlefield was going to go if it didn't change back after Battlefield 4. And it's uh, it look, it's looking pretty good. I'm not too sure about the objective of it. I mean, I get that it's it sort of seems like a capture the flag type of mode where you carry this cube or a box back to your, I guess, your base to earn points for your team. But I'm just saying I'm not too sure if it's going to be my bag doing that type of objective. Uh, hopefully there's some other modes. But, yeah, we'll see. The, the, if, if the trailers and the gameplay I've seen so far is anything to go on, it looks like it's going to be a fucking blast. So hopefully the game modes that they have or the game mode that they have it all built around is something compelling enough to keep bringing me back and wanting to play, you know, for the purposes of winning and, you know, giving all my effort and all that stuff. But the uh, the shooting, the combat, the destruction all looks solid. So I'm definitely going to check this out. So this is starting today, the beta. I, I don't think I actually even told you yet how to get in. So it's kicking off today and it's running for two weeks. So it's running all the way until March 21st. And in order to get access, it's actually really easy to request access. You basically just want to go onto Steam. And then down here, underneath this the finals play test, there'll be a green box right about here. Just like this add to your wishlist one, but it'll, it'll say request access. And you'll just be logged into Steam and click on that. And it'll tell you that, you know, just wait until they open up spots. So 
I haven't gotten anything yet saying that I'm in the beta, but I'm hoping once it is actually opened up, maybe they'll let me know or, you know, maybe they'll roll out like additional access and phases. Like maybe at first, you know, just to kind of test the server load, maybe maybe there'll only be like 10, 20,000 people, but maybe over the course of the next two weeks that this beta is going to be going on, my hope is that they'll open up access to more and more people. That would be ideal. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Hope you have a fantastic day. And I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Peace. And I hope it's on the finals. I would like to be doing a video on that if I could. But we'll have to wait and see if I have beta access, won't we? Peace.